Good morning. Thank you for all of y'all being here today. Today, uh, we are taking the first step to do exactly what I said I was going to do after these scurrilous attacks were launched against myself and my family. We are holding CNN accountable. And uh, we are going to get to the bottom of what's going on here. And uh, we are glad to be here today to be able to do that. I said at the very beginning, what this amounts to is to quote Clarence Thomas, this is a high tech legend on a candidate who has been targeted from day one by folks who disagree with me politically and want to see me destroyed. And so we are glad to take these first steps to fight back against what we consider to be one of the greatest examples of political interference in this state's history and quite possibly this nation's history. And with that, I'll turn it over to my attorney, Jesse Benal. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. A few weeks ago, my team set out on this investigation. We were determined to follow the facts. The investigation was guided by those facts. The team that uh, in, uh, was involved in this investigation included uh, a number of attorneys, including, including seasoned trial attorneys and former federal prosecutors. The investigation was led by a former FBI special agent, and we had a number of other specialists that uh, were highly involved in going down and following the facts knocking on doors, uh, picking up the, the telephone, and also using the, the full range of technology resources available to us in order to fully investigate. The lawsuit that we filed today is the first step, the first fruit of that investigation. We have worked tirelessly to get to the truth for the sake of Lieutenant Governor Robinson, his family, and the voters of North Carolina. And then today in Wake County Superior Court, we filed a defamation lawsuit against the Cable News Network and Lewis Money. That lawsuit lays out the effort to, as Lieutenant Governor said, use a high-tech lynching in order to interfere with North Carolina's 2024 gubernatorial election. We expect to find that there are more bad actors that have been involved in this process to interfere with the election, and there is more to come. And let me say this, there have been those that have tried to interfere with our investigation by stonewalling. And to them, I will say that we will use every tool at our disposal now that a lawsuit has been filed, including the subpoena power in order to continue pursuing the facts, and you will not be able to hide behind stonewalling. We will get to the truth. I'll be happy to answer any questions. As of right now, the, the uh, plaintiff in the lawsuit is Lieutenant Governor Robinson. Uh, for a, a defamation lawsuit, you seek damages. We are seeking $50 million in damages for the reputational harm that has been done to Lieutenant Governor Robinson's good name. In the course of the investigation, um, what, what have you, I know you've denied the story from the beginning, but I mean, actually have you been able to prove that um, it's not true, or can you elaborate on that at all? Yeah. Uh, what our investigation has shown so far is that uh, there were a number of inconsistencies that were, that were used that, that went beyond journalistic standards in the way that, that CNN uh, performed their, uh, their reporting. Um, first of all, let me say that we continue to, uh, that uh, Lieutenant Governor Robinson has always said these allegations are completely false. Our investigation has shown that he is, is quite frankly, right about that, that, that um, what CNN did and when what others that uh, they have worked with uh, have, have done in this case is, uh, is tantamount to what we truly believe is this uh, uh, journalistic hit job in order to interfere 
with an election. So for instance, when you use information that is taken from uh, 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 data breaches and you don't properly verify that information, information that was available to anyone on the dark web, for instance, if you take that and then put it as the truth on, on your website, that can be one thing that is a reckless disregard for the truth um, and, is, and shows actual malice. Our, our lawsuit, which will be available to you, walks through that entire process and, and uh, why uh, we believe what was done was defamation. Yes, sir. I had a question for the lieutenant governor and for you. Just obviously this has had an impact on polls on the election, as you guys have, have stated. If you don't win this election, do you have any plans or intent to primary Senator Tills in 2026? Uh, well, you know, polls are one thing, but we're still campaigning, and we're making five to seven stops a, a day, and every place we go is filled to capacity. So we anticipate winning this election despite this attack. So any plans for the future that we have are at the governor's mansion. And as for the branches for this election, Senator Tillis has called for y'all to provide any evidence we've seen. Uh, six men who said Robinson visited a porn store in Greensboro. You guys say he, they all lied. Uh, CNN was able to have biographical details attaching the username. Said so Lieutenant Governor Politico found an IP address that showed uh, it was near Robinson's home. Eight people have left the campaign. Four people have left the office. Uh, you guys say these allegations are all false 26 days later can you produce any evidence here today to support those assertions yeah that's what the complaint is the complaint is is a rundown of our evidence but let me say really clearly when they say for instance uh, biographical data where, where they say uh, other things that might be consistent with the way that that he's known to talk and that he did talk at, uh, at the time on Facebook an open Facebook account that is uh, simply nothing that that is compelling uh, uh, that CNN has brought forward uh, for information that is nothing more than, than data breach uh, information that could come from anyone at any time. Uh, the, the lawsuit walks through every single, uh, or uh, not every single one, much of the so far in this process, and there will be more to come. Let's uh, remember that your average federal investigation uh, in something like this would take months and months, if not years. Weeks. We have already put forward compelling evidence that CNN failed to use uh, journalistic standards in the way they have interfered with this election. And once we have subpoena power, once we have discovery, there will be even more that will come forward. Yes, we are alleging it is false, and that's what our lawsuit says. That's something that's up to the, the, the court system. We are moving as fast as possible to, to get answers to this question, but of course there is a litigation process. And you've been in contact with any of the editorial staff over at CNN, any of the reporters that were involved, the editor that oversaw the publication of the story, or what has been your extent of your... We, we have asked CNN for retraction. They have declined to do so. Uh, we have asked to be able to examine the data that CNN used in their reporting. They have declined to give us access to that information. They have declined to, to show their work in how they arrived at these, con at these conclusions. Uh, and so uh, we, um, uh, in, in this process, have and, and will continue to try to get to the bottom of it, but that's one of the importance of the discovery process is uh, uh, we will now be able to, to get uh, a number of uh, uh, pieces of information from CNN and from other third parties through the discovery process. Are you behind the sit I'm sorry? There are a number of other parties that, that we believe uh, are, that we'll be able to come forward uh, with in time to show the breadth of people who have decided to engage in this high-tech lynching, but I'm not going to do what CNN did by using uh, guesses 
to, to put those names out there right now. What we are going to do is continue our investigation in a professional way, and once we have the solid information, then that will be part of our lawsuit. Are you finding any evidence to suggest so far that this is some kind of AI deep fake to backdate these posts on the site, or are you simply proving through this lawsuit that they have inadequately proven the evidence to back up the claims in the story? They haven't given us any information that would allow us to know any of that one way or another because, again, we have asked for them to be able to show their work, for us to be able to do a, an audit of the resources that they've used. And the fact that these posts were taken down off of you know the, the relevant website so uh, so soon after the reporting and the fact that CNN hasn't uh, come forward to allow that full audit of their information has made that difficult so far which is again why the discovery process is so important. The Twitter account that was cited by uh, CNN in its report um, only started in I believe September 2018 but it, the reporting actually cited posts from before that from that handle um, and if you go and you look at that Twitter account now, it appears to be, it, honestly, it looks like a 4chan troll account, but it points to Josh Stein's website. Do, do you have any comment on that? Uh, I think that these are all great issues that we will continue to look at. And you're exactly right. There's a number of the technological issues of these cases uh, and everything from, from uh, Twitter accounts to IP addresses and everything that right now don't make sense. And that is why our investigation is continuing. Um, and that is why we, we think as more and more information comes out, it will become more and more uh, clear that this is nothing but uh, the high-tech launching. Is so this a defamation lawsuit because you keep bringing up this term of election interference? You're saying that CNN tried to interfere with the gubernatorial race. Can you elaborate a little bit on, on what that entails on your part, what you believe that means? Absolutely. So defamation is the publication of false statements. The, the uh, uh, election interference here shows the, uh, is one of the things that can show actual malice in a case. Uh, when in a defamation case, when we have to show that something was was done with an organization that uh, is uh, knew the information was false or made it with a reckless disregard for the truth, election interference pr uh, is, provides the the motive uh, there uh, for them to do that, which is why this is very much an election uh, interference case. I'm saying that a left-wing media outlet is going to do everything they can to stop this man from being governor because they know that this man has an ability to connect with voters in a way that quite frankly scares them. And they don't want him uh, to be involved in, in politics at any level. And so that's, uh, I think that's what we've seen here. What are the allegations in this suit against Lewis Money? You mentioned he's one of the uh, defendants in what you filed. Yeah, uh, the, the allegations are also that, that Lewis Money and uh, his activities um, uh, were, also, were also defamatory, and um, uh, the, the lawsuit will lay out everything as, as regards to Lewis Money. You said that there is a list of people that you believe to be involved. Is that outlined in the complaint? There's a number of people involved. Right. Is that uh, the, in the complaint? The, the, com the investigation is ongoing. We don't uh, name every single uh, person that we believe to be involved at this point because that would be irresponsible. And we are, are not uh, going to, to go down the same trap as uh, we believe CNN has done, for instance, and, and get ahead of ourselves. But we do believe, and our investigation has, has led us to believe that this is the tip of the iceberg. This is not by any stretch of the imagination the end. So logistically, in terms of the way that the CNN story was put out with screenshots and posts, like you think all, so would all of that just have been manufactured essentially, is what you're alleging? Those posts could have been made by, by anyone, I think, and we believe it is very suspect that they were taken down so soon after the story ran without an ability to do a full uh, investigation on those. And let's remember, this is something that, uh, that the allegations here are of a supposed event years and years and years ago. Uh, you know, one of the things that our FBI investigator brought up uh, to us is, 
how much more difficult this is than doing a regular FBI investigation because if somebody brought this to the FBI, they would say, there's nothing we can do here, it's past the statute of limitations, and so they wouldn't even investigate it. Because when you have to go back, you know, over a dozen years in order to look at information, in order to prove somebody's innocence just based on spurless allegations alone, it makes it very, very difficult, which is why I'm particularly proud of, uh, of our team and in just the, the few short weeks that we've had this, how far we've been able to, to go to show uh, uh, the, the falsity of, uh, of this story. If your, if your proof is so good, why are other Republicans standing with you? Just by yourself. We stand with the voters of, or the, 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 the Lieutenant Governor Robinson stands with the voters of North Carolina. Our job is not to go convince uh, politicians or bureaucrats. This case is for the courts. We're going to go make our case in court. This case is for a jury. How much money is this all costing? Uh, I mean, any, any lawsuit costs money, and that's one of the real harms here. This is something that's so disgusting, is that rather than being out on the campaign trail full-time, uh, like he actually, frankly, he is, talking about the, the voters of North Carolina, when you have such a, uh, an effort at election interference, it's an attempt to distract, it's an attempt to try to use lawfare in order to force people to use financial resources on uh, fighting back against rumors and innuendos rather than getting out there and talking about the issues that are important to voters. It's been 26 days since that story broke. I remember back for previous stories or PowerPoint presentations outside the Lieutenant Governor's office walking through uh, a number of different things. Is, is there any evidence, you said it could be anyone who wrote these posts, do you have any evidence to support that it wasn't the Lieutenant Governor? Well, we have, first of all, we have a complaint, a complaint that has been filed in court. Um, and that is something, that, you know, that is the way that we do the litigation process. Uh, in this in this country, and now we will have the opportunity to go forward and prove uh, what we have put in the complaint, and we are confident in our in our ability to do that. You mentioned these posts getting removed shortly after the publication of the story. Obviously, CNN wouldn't have purview over that. That would be up to the websites, whatever you know, servers host them. Have you been in contact with those sites to try and get a hold of those materials, of the archives of those pages, and what is that? Like I said uh, before, there have been a, a number of efforts to reach out to a number of people, not just picking up the telephone, but actually knocking on doors. And there's been some people that have been more forthcoming than others. Uh, and again, what I will say is they will not be able to hide uh, behind obstruction anymore because uh, as this lawsuit moves forward, we will have subpoena power, we will have the power of discovery. For the Lieutenant Governor, Josh Stein the other day told reporters that discovery will be very interesting. Was there any message you wanted to send to Attorney General Stein in response to what he's saying? Well, has this investigation impacted the campaign's finances at all? I know the uh, TV ad stopped running around the time that the CNN report came out. Is this diverting resources that otherwise be getting your message out on TV? I can, I can answer that question. Uh, our campaign financing is still going well, but we've chosen to go in a different direction there. We've chosen to hit the road and get out and actually meet the people. We find that it's, uh, it's much more, leaves our campaign more financially stable and flush. And uh, we find out, we find, we are finding this far more effective uh, than what we've been doing in the past in our campaign. We should have done this uh, long ago, actually. For the lieutenant governor, some of your senior staff stepping down, some of your campaign staff stepping down, um, well, I can tell you this. Uh, there was a time when uh, one of your news outlets drew me as, uh, characterized me as a Klansman in a cartoon. And I stood on that porch and held a press conference. And when I did, there were very few people that stood behind me on that porch. Very few. It was my wife and a few others. You know, when times of trouble come in this, polit this thing we call politics, it separates the strong folks from the weak. Uh, the weak will turn and run, and the strong will stand and fight. And that's what we're doing here today. We're standing and fighting. Regardless of who turned and ran away from us, regardless of who doesn't believe us, regardless of who does, we know what the truth is, and we're ready to stand and fight. Those who are not, we're not worried about. 
subpoena that CNN can, of course, refuse to show you the person, put the person in, right? Where does the First Amendment stop in defamation? Where are you making that argument? That's an excellent question. Defamatory speech is not free speech. You do not have the right to go around lying with, uh, about people. You do not have the right to go maliciously attack people with falsehoods in order to affect an election. The source material we're talking about isn't necessarily only from, from uh, individual sources, but even the technological data that they collected in this process to be able to allow us full access to that, to get to the truth. We are the ones using the First Amendment in this case to go bring this case uh, uh, in not only the, the court system, to the voters, to get to the truth. Obstruction will not get in the way. Um, and uh, uh, again, I, it's very important to, to remember that there is a huge difference between freedom of speech and defamatory lives. Thank you all very much for your time.